The Walking Dead series has suggested before that Rick may not be all that different from the villains. Surprising lines of distinction were drawn between Gareth the Cannibal and Rick. One could even argue that the Governor and Rick share many different tendencies. However, The Walking Dead has brought Negan into the mix, and he's set to appear on the show here very, very soon. Negan will be portrayed by Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and reports suggest that he will be appearing in the Season 6 Part 2 finale. And let me tell you, there has never been a villain more similar to Rick in The Walking Dead's history. But before we get into all that, we first have to discuss who Negan is and why he's so important. Now, Negan is the leader of the ironically named Saviors, who take 50% of resources from all neighboring settlements. For this reason, nobody likes Negan, not even his own followers, but he is a leader of men and does provide security to those he steals from. He's an ex-car salesman with an extremely vulgar mouth, but this creates a solid command of language, especially when it's meant to intimidate and belittle his opponents. More than likely, Negan was a bully in high school. As testament to this, after a long, profanity-filled speech, Negan infamously kills Glenn with his barbed wire bat, Lucille. He then turns to Rick and he says, I'm gonna slide my dick down your throat and you're gonna thank me for it before this is over. This cements Negan's status as the true alpha in the conversation, and makes Rick look weak among his peers. Now, when Negan isn't being so ridiculous and over the top, he actually sounds somewhat reasonable. There were times in the comic series you wanted Rick to agree to compromise, but then you remember Negan's inhumanity. One moment that caught me by surprise was when Spencer comes to Negan explaining that Rick is not fit to lead the group and that he will eventually try to overthrow Negan. Negan says that at least Rick has guts, and then he proceeds to disembowel Spencer with a long knife. There's some irony there. Negan genuinely believes Rick to be a good man who cares about his community, willing to do anything to protect it. This includes bowing to Negan's will. In his own messed up way, Negan is the same. By subjugating the community of Alexandria and the Hilltop Colony, Negan is doing what must be done in order to protect his own, even if that means sometimes burning half their face off with an iron. And if you think about it, Rick has really done the same thing Negan has did, albeit with a lot less violence. He essentially invaded Alexandria. He brought his own people into the city, and after a brief struggle, he imposed his own rule set among those people. There was a huge hullabaloo about wielding guns and other weaponry in broad daylight, but eventually Rick and his friends got their way. One of Rick's biggest dismissals of Deanna's power as being mayor of Alexandria was when he went and beat up Peter. I'm trying not to kill you. No! Stop Actually, the two really beat the snot out of each other, but at the end of the fight, Rick brought out a pistol and he waved it around at a number of different townsfolk. You wanna kick me out? In this moment, he looked a lot like Negan. He used terror to subjugate people around him. Although Michonne actually put a stop to this, who was one of Rick's people, we still have to wonder, was Rick fit to lead in that moment? And although we've gone to try and answer those questions in both the series and the comic books, I think it's fair to say that questions still linger. At one point, Carl stows away in the Savior's van in an attempt to assassinate Negan. Negan, having already taken so much from Alexandria, realizes that if he were to kill Carl, there would be no control. Rick. Negan actually brings Carl back, even after Carl kills multiple saviors. For Rick, this is important because, well, Carl's his kid. For everyone else, it looks like the school bully just took little Rick's wallet, patted him on the shoulder, and Rick's happy about it. And if you think about Rick's actions throughout the course of the Walking Dead series, then it's really just a long line of Rick going to places telling people how things should be done, those people resisting to how Rick wants them done, and eventually Rick having his way. And isn't that a lot like what Negan has done in order to survive and protect those around him? Where the two most differ, at least initially, is in diplomacy. When it comes to foreign policy, Rick is certainly far more liberal than the conservative Negan. Really, this ultimately proves to be Negan's downfall as he pushes different colonies and groups too far, inciting rebellion among multiple factions. But Rick 
Rick pulls a Negan near the end of the All Out War saga. He goes on a huge display of peace and then essentially stabs Negan in the back, although in this case it's the jugular. In this sense, we see that no matter how innocent or plausible someone's reign might look on the surface, everyone can be pushed to the breaking point. The animalistic side of Rick is brought to the forefront, morals and ethics tossed to the side in an effort to rid the world of cancerous Negan. In fact, in this moment, there's very little difference between the two. You could actually argue that Negan is offering peace, while Rick is actually the one who's inciting violence. We'll never really know in that moment what Negan would have done, because he's a crafty son of a bitch. But what we can say is we see on the surface Negan is offering peace. And in this sense, we see in Rick what we saw in Negan for many comic books beforehand. This isn't to say what Rick did was uncalled for, but it's certainly something to think about. The Walking Dead began more as a sort of social commentary, and in many ways it still is. But what I think writer Robert Kirkman is now trying to convey with more forcefulness is the idea that we can all go there. The line of distinction between animal and society has grown paper thin in the Walking Dead universe. Our friendly small town cop is in no way, shape, or form the person we met at the beginning of the series. And Negan? He's a far cry from a humble car salesman, now a domineering and ruthless dictator. Here's a reminder that Rick himself has stated many times before that he is unquestionably in charge. You're staying. What I think we have learned most of all throughout the interactions with Negan is that no matter who you are and no matter what your intentions may be, your first and foremost and primary concern is that of survival, especially when it comes to family. It is a wonder that Rick has been able to retain his humanity for so long and with so much wherewithal. But we have to ask the question, how much longer can Rick keep this up and where will we see his character be taken into the coming years? These are all questions to think about and we really appreciate you tuning in to Chosen Totem and we want to give a big shout out to the Walking Dead enthusiasts for hosting us on this video. But make sure you go hit that subscribe button and check out their website. It is some of the most amazing Walking Dead coverage that you will ever find. Thank you once again and this is Jacob Saylor for Chosen Totem, signing off.